Apple unveiling a new Apple Watch with a blood oxygen reader, iPads, and a fitness service at its first ever virtual product revealed today. The pandemic stopping Apple from inviting journalists to its headquarters, but not from rolling out some new software and hardware. NBC News business and technology correspondent Joe Ling Kent would normally be at Apple HQ in Cupertino today, but 2020 <laughs> is, a cor of course, a year of firsts. So, Joe, we're doing it a little differently this year, but let's talk uh, about some of these new we products, are. specifically the new Apple Watch. Apple really playing into its health benefits as we're dealing with COVID-19. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Tim Cook unveiled the Apple Watch Series 6, and this is a new device. And the headline here is that you can actually take your blood oxygen levels through a red and infrared reader on the new watch. Uh, so it's it's a really cool new health product here. Of course, uh, this comes after Apple unveiled ECG capabilities uh, and, and being able to really track your fitness. So it's part of a sort of broader play for health. They really relied on the stories of people who've credited Apple Watch for helping save their lives or improve their health. Uh, Joe, we, we've got new iPads, also a new fitness service. Tell us about some of the, uh, the other uh, or, or about those headline uh, announcements today. Yeah, you saw an improved Apple um, iPad Air, and so the faster processor, uh, different screens. Uh, you also have a new iPad Original Edition, of course, there too. Uh, the other interesting thing, though, is that they unveiled Apple Fitness Plus, which is basically linked to your Apple Watch. It's a new way to do on-demand fitness classes, as so many of us work out at home. I know I'm working out on FaceTime every now and then uh, with a trainer or a virtual class, right? And so they're really playing mm -hmm. into that, perhaps Same going here. after the market that Peloton has owned, yeah, pretty well. And so they're really capitalizing on this at-home moment. Uh, but it's an interesting subscription service. It's about $80 a year. Uh, so it certainly costs money. But you can then cast that from your Apple Watch to an iPhone or an iPad or Apple TV. Joe, one last question for you before you go. No mention of new iPhones today. What's going on there? And can we still perhaps see an announcement later this fall? Yeah, you probably can expect some sort of announcement. There have been rumors flying, images, leaked images flying all around, but we did not get a new iPhone for the first time since September 2012. So this has been a really consistent event, and some analysts say that some of these new devices that we did see today and a new subscription program called Apple One, you know, they may get a little bit less attention because there was no iPhone unveiled here, but a lot of factors going into this, including the uh, production and, and COVID-19, of course, playing into this. But yeah, the first time in eight years we haven't seen a new iPhone. So expect possible news in the coming weeks. But as one Apple source told me, all of this is about surprise and delight. So in, in, interpret that however you wish. All right, Joe, thank you so much. Great to have you on an unusual Apple event day. Thanks a Good lot. Good to see you. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.